Hello and welcome back to Uro Uro Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton. Last time we started on our way to Fence Relief and we took a slight detour to take care of this eagle and make a few more figurines. I'm just going to have a look at these figurines because we have a lot of things in our backpack and I'm thinking maybe we don't need as much as we have here. So I have four black bullhead here and we have seven ibex meat and we have all of these figurines now when we were fighting the eagle uh, we even had figurines now if i just go down a page you'll see that we, we still have all of these we had the ibex bone figurine of dwarves in our right hand while we were fighting which is maybe not so optimal so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop the ibex meat that way we'll have room for these figurines in our backpack i'm just going to drop f and now I should be able to put the figurine of dwarves in the backpack. Bukar tapered lash in the backpack. Some dwarves in the backpack. Ravad perplex basements in the backpack. Ravad perplex basements in the backpack again. I have the worst time trying to say Ravad perplex basements. That is such a difficult name. And finally we'll put Zon prestige paper in the backpack. So I think that's it. So if I go now and I page down again, we can see that, oh, we still have another figurine of Ravad perplex basements in our left hand. So let's just take care of that. And there we go in the backpack. And now if I press Q, what that does is that straps my copper battle axe and my bronze shield to my upper body. And so now I don't have anything in my hand. So if I go I again and I just page down, you can see that there's nothing actually in my hands. There's lots of water covering my body. Ah, because it's raining. Yeah, that's why. Last time we said we're going to try and make our way down to this road here. And hopefully this road eventually turns up and ends up going to fence relieved over here. Basically, we're going to just follow this stream. And that should take us straight to the road. And again, we're sneaking. And so off we go. One thing I should mention here, you can see another cone of vision here, but you can see that it's blue. And blue means it is on a different level. So in this particular case, it's one level above us. So if I now press L to look, I can then uh, use the left hand sign to go up a level, to look up a level. And then you can see this is kind of the plateau, one level above us. And you can see one level below, that's where we are here. And you can see it's da is a down arrow, so that means that we're one over below, keep going up, and there you can see there's a W there, and I believe that is probably a wolf. Oh no, it's a, it's a frail wolverine. To be honest, I do not want to mess with wolverines right now. I don't think we're quite strong enough to attack wolverines. So if we get attacked, we'll have to defend ourselves, but I'm hoping that it will not see us. So we're not going to try and get anywhere near there. So I'll just press escape to get back where we are and hopefully, yeah, it doesn't look like, doesn't look like they're interested in us anyway, so that's fine. It really is raining. You can see all these blue colons. So it's just been raining constantly on our journey, which I'm sure is absolutely miserable. If we, for instance, if we talk to Tess, talk about our emotions, you'll see that we have great annoyance uh, while caught in the rain. One thing that is actually important when you're playing in adventure mode is to check on your mental state every once in a while. And just talking to someone and saying something general about your emotional state will tell you what the main issue your character has. And right now, she says, why are they so fixed on these baubles? And what that means is that she's frustrated with people who are obsessed with obtaining wealth because that's not her values so nothing really major if you get to a point where they're very upset about seeing death all around them or something like that then it's sometimes it's a good idea to take a break one thing i did notice though is that we are unfocused uh, because we haven't prayed to the flickering sun and maybe that's why it's raining on us all the time so maybe we should just do that quickly and that's actually pretty easy to do we're going to start a new conversation and we're going to talk to the flickering sun. 
And I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do when you're praying. And in fact, there's a really, really good Dwarf Fortress comic called The Littlest Cheesemaker. And there's a scene in The Littlest Cheesemaker where the protagonist uh, prays for the first time and she says, I don't really know what to say. And she proceeds by greeting her deity. And I think this is probably the, <laughs> the way to go. So we greet the flickering sun and then we can just maybe talk. Um, we can talk a little bit about, maybe we can talk about, um, again, our emotions. Maybe let's just complain about the rain. It is the flickering sun after all. Maybe, maybe our deity can make the rain go away. Uh, we can also comment on the weather just to, just to drive in the point. And it's cold as well. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much complaining at this point. We can comment on the natural surroundings. And we long for civilization because we are sick of traveling in the cold, wet. After that, I think maybe it's probably a good idea to... We can ask our god how they're feeling, but we'll get no answer, unfortunately. I'm not going to brag about my violent acts, but we'll just say goodbye. And now, if I go in here, you can see we're now unfettered, having prayed to the flickering sun. And I'm hoping that this will stop the rain. Although, not really expecting it to be... <laughs> <laughs> to be totally honest so aha so here we can see there are some more the these pink cones are ones that are below us and again I'm just going to look and I'm going to use the greater than sign to look down and there are a couple levels down those look like yaks to me yes they are interesting I've actually never encountered yaks before in the wild normally they are pack animals so they're often found near settlements, but I've never really seen them wandering around in the uh, mountains before. So I'm just going to avoid them because I don't really want to attack a yak. If you attack a yak, you'll get some flak. Alright, we'll just keep going. And I'm going to go into fast travel mode again just to see where we are. Ah, we're almost down to the road actually. So I've gone a little bit more eastward than I had actually intended, but that's fine because this is generally where we want to go. We're almost to this road. I'm just going to keep up. Ah, we have met another wolverine and this one's a muscular wolverine. So I think again, we're going to try to avoid it. And Balmark is saying, we have been under siege by an ancient force of nature. The untamed flower is in the thin barb. Seek this place if you hunt Nomar Snake Sowl, the Mountain Titan. The thin barb sounds familiar where the untamed flower is. I'm sure he has absolutely no idea as usual. Yes. <laughs> I don't know myself and I don't even know anyone that could tell you. I don't know how Balmrick gets all this information when he has absolutely no freaking idea <laughs> where any of it is. One of the things that's a bit strange about this events system you can see on the right hand side is that um, if I just use plus or minus here you can see that uh, a yak cow attacked us it didn't really attack us um, but when you have encounters like this it tends to believe that you actually had an attack and I think that's mainly because if we had actually encountered it closely they may have attacked us which is a good reason for avoiding them I've just noticed something also very interesting Probably someone has noticed this very much before this, but Tess has too many S's. Well, I think maybe that's just going to be her, her thing. <laughs> I hadn't realized that until just this moment. So she's Tess. Alright, let's see if we can avoid this Wolverine, because I really believe that the Wolverine will kill us if we try to attack it. Because we we're just we have no armor, and our companions, although Tessa is quite accomplished, Osan is really not up to the task. So we're just going to try and avoid this encounter if possible. There we are. We have made it to the road, and then you can see. I'm assuming this is a road. This is what this yellow sand is. It looks like a road to me. And let me just check on fast travel mode. And yes, you can see we're standing on the road. So unfortunately, we can't fast travel again since we're still in the mountains. But once we get to 
this kind of broken area, which is probably, I think this is a desert. I think this was the national desert, if I remember correctly. We can probably check. Yeah, so that's the national desert. There's also the beak of sorcery. I seem to remember as well that we said that we, we were going to try to avoid the Beak of Sorcery and we were going to try to avoid the National Desert and we are doing nothing of the kind but you know we're adventurers so <laughs> we should adventure. And I'm hungry and thirsty again so I'm just going to drink some water and we can eat some of that black bullhead. Now you'll notice as well that I haven't fed my companions and that's because companions don't need to eat or drink which is very very convenient for them. I have to eat and drink uh, very frequently. In fortress mode you almost never have to eat or drink actually. Dwarves eat once a month and they drink twice a month. But in adventure mode they have to eat and drink several times a day and I think actually if you do more activity you have to eat and drink more. So that's just how it goes. All right. So I think we've we have now emerged from the mountains, and if we just carry along the road a little bit, I think we'll be able to go back into fast track mode. We've encountered Kias again. I'm wondering if Tess will go crazy and try to kill them all. We'll see. <laughs> Kia, Kias are really annoying. They're not particularly dangerous, but they really are annoying. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, looks like. <laughs> uh, I think that's. That's possibly Balmerick there. Yeah, Balmerick is making his way towards the Kias, and Tess is as well. So I might just wait here and see what happens. Yes, and Balmerick punches the muscular Kia in the right lower leg from behind, and the injured part explodes into gore. So he's pretty good at punching. Maybe he doesn't need a weapon. An artery has been torn open. Yeah, pretty much he's single-handedly killed that Kia. It's, it's pretty much dead now, I'll just wait. Even though he's won the fight, I think he wants to press his case. <laughs> and he starts to wrestle the Kia for no good reason. Then he realizes that it's kind of uh, useless and he lets uh, the Kia go. Then you can see there's a flying copper bolt strikes the frail Kia in the right wing. Now I don't really understand. I think because the Kias are birds, Tess will use her crossbow. And you'll notice in her other fights that she wouldn't use a crossbow. And I. I don't really know why that is. I'm, I've got some ideas of some ways maybe of enticing her to use her crossbow more often in attacks. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to do that in the future. But anyway, I'm just going to let them get on with it here because really this is good experience for them. And we actually need them to be decent at fighting because if we encounter, for instance, like that Wolverine, there is no way that Sarah can take on a Wolverine by herself. I'll just let that go for a bit. Uh, Bomberk is a is a machine here with the punching. One of them's flown away here. If I just look up, you can see there he is, and he's got the blue exclamation mark on it. Now the blue exclamation mark usually means that either they're stunned or they're frightened. And part of the problem is I've actually changed the color scheme, so I'm never quite sure which one it is. And this one, I think they're just it's just frightened. So if I just look at the muscular Kia, you can see that there's nothing here that says he's stunned. So I think that just means he's frightened. And if we have a look at his description, you can see his liver is mangled beyond recognition and his upper body is bruised. With the mangled liver, I don't think he's going to last very long. I think there's another Kia up here somewhere. I'm just looking up a few levels and then you can see that in fact there's another Kia. Possibly Tess will shoot one of those down. Yeah, there we go. She has shot the Kia, and you'll notice that the crossbow bolt ended up here. So I'm just going to go pick that up, and probably the other Kia will crash to earth in just a second. There it goes. And he's bled to death. So I think that's the end of the encounter. So I'm just going to get that bolt. I'm going to put the bolt. So I'm just going to put S into our backpack. I'm going to try to butcher, but... I don't think there are any keys that are big enough to butcher. I think they're all too small. Which is a bit strange because I don't think a Kia is particularly smaller than an Eagle. Maybe slightly smaller, but not a lot. Alright, off we go. Following the yellow brick road. Now if I go back into 
So we're not out of the mountains yet. So Now, I am conscious that I had promised to try and keep these episodes just a little bit shorter so I could get them out the door faster, but I do really want to at least get out of these mountains before we stop the episode, so let's give that a try. And we also have, I need to check to see what's up here. There's some more yaks here. Yeah. I don't think the yaks will give us any trouble, to be honest. So, as long as we just... Yeah, they're all running away, so that's fine. We'll just let that go. There's some more yaks, frightened yaks. If we were in need of meat or bones, then I would consider attacking one of the yaks, although they'd probably be quite dangerous. But we're quite fine, I think. We can't carry any more bones anyway. And then we have these keys along the way, which will keep Bomrick and Tess occupied, I reckon. Yep. So the flying copper bolt strikes the key in the beak, and <laughs> the severed part sails off in an arc. Now that is quite a shot, Tess. I'm very much impressed, right on the beak, and severed it in one go. So I might just stand here. Well, while we're here, I may just practice wrestling maneuver. So let's, since my companions are intent on attacking these Kias, I think what we'll do is we'll just do some practice here. So we're going to grab the Kia with our left hand. Let's grab the neck. Generally speaking, the neck is a good target to wrestle because you can actually choke the opponent. But there are other applications for wrestling as well, which are more defensive, and the neck is not a good target for that. Here you can see one of the Kias has bled to death, it's the one that got shot by Tess, and I've grabbed another one from behind with my left hand. Now if I go again and I say wrestle, actually just before I do that, let me just look at this Kia and you'll see here, the Kia I'm looking at here is I'm in a status brawl, and that's because we wrestled with the Kia rather than tried to use our axe or something. And when you're in a brawl, usually it means it's easier to withdraw from the fight. So usually your opponent won't try to continue the fight if you try to run away, for instance. But if it's a lethal fight or if it's a no-quarter fight, then your opponent will not leave it alone. So it's better to start with a brawl if you're not sure you're going to be able to get out of the fight well enough. It's um, it's a little bit of a, an art, really. Again, we're going to attack, and I'm going to wrestle. You can see here that there's two kinds of pinching that you can do. You can pinch the neck, and you can pinch the throat. Now, if we pinch the throat, that's the front of the neck, where all the blood vessels and that kind of thing are. And if we pinch the neck, that's where the bone is. And so, depending on what you're trying to do, you'll have a different effect. If we want to, for instance, paralyze or slow down something, then pitching the neck is a good technique. If you want to choke something, then pinching the throat is what you want. So we're going to pinch the throat. You pinch the Kia's throat with your left hand and the part splits in gore. A major artery has been opened by the attack. A tendon in the upper spine has been torn. This fight is actually over at this point because we've opened a major artery and the Kia has fallen over so it's completely dead in reality. So we can completely ignore it at this point because it will bleed to death, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, you can see it's attacking us with uh, fourth toe right foot snatch at. Again, that's because we have good observation ability. So what I'm going to do is I want to block that, and you just got to remember, so this is right foot fourth toe. So we want to block this right foot fourth toe, and we do that by wrestling, and we can do use our right hand. down right foot fourth toe right here and now if we try to grab that we can if we're lucky intercept the attack so let's see how we do and we did a good job so we grab the Kia by the fourth toe right foot with our right hand and the Kia's attack is interrupted and so this means that we've we've effectively dodged the attack I now want to get us out of wrestling because we can't dodge anything if we're wrestling so with our left hand, we've got the neck, and I'm actually just going to release our grip on the neck, and I'll press comma, that released the grip. Now I'm going to, you can see again, so 
the key is now attacking us with a bite, aiming for the right upper arm. Again, wrestle with our left hand, and we can go for the beak, because that's what it's biting with. And we grab the Kia by the beak with our left hand, and the Kia's attack is interrupted. Now, this is, again, you remember we set our observation level quite high when we created Sarah, and this is the reason why, because you can have a very good defense. You'll notice I don't have my shield, I don't have any armor, but it's fine. I can actually uh, deal with this just with wrestling. We have a very low wrestling level, which is fine when you're attacking uh, creatures. If we were attacking uh, humanoids who have skill, then this would be a completely different story and we <laughs> would be in trouble. But against these kids, I, I can actually probably indefinitely maintain this. So again, we're going to wrestle the Kia, and I'm just going to now, again, I'm going to wrestle with this fourth toe. I want to release the grip. And now it's attacking us. We don't know what it's doing. All right. So what I really want to do then is because I don't know what this Kia is doing. I What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrestle. I'm still wrestling it, so I can't get out of the way. So with my left hand, I, I'm still holding it, so hmm, that's frustrating, because we don't know what it's actually doing. Let me just go back again. If I look at strike here, what you'll see is that there are some strikes that are easier and some strikes that are less easy. So you can see that left lower leg is an easy strike, right foot is an easy strike. If we go down, you can see that the first toe left foot foot is an easy strike, second toe left foot is an easy strike, third toe left foot is an easy strike, fourth toe left foot is an easy strike. All right, so all of these is on the Kia's left foot, which means that it's probably attacking with the left foot. You also notice that there, that there are these exclamation marks. And what exclamation marks are are basically this is an indication that this becomes a very easy strike so for instance if i if i attack the first toe left foot you'll see that one of these my punch with my left hand is a direct hit and probably i will destroy that first toe if i do that now this is where it gets to be a bit of a gamble because we can't avoid this attack at this point and we have actually a couple here we have another one here the lower body we have an easy attack as well with a punch. So this one gives us very square with a kick in the lower body, but it's very slow. So we don't really want to go for that uh, because that the Kia's attack will probably land before we get a chance to get our kick in. So we know it's attacking with its left foot. So I'm just going to take the risk here and I'm going to use my right hand to with the left foot. Since it was the first toe that we had the very, very easy attack on, I'm guessing that that's the one that's going to be attacking us. So we're going to grab the first toe left foot with the right hand, and hopefully that will intercept that attack. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't, um, there's a good chance that uh, poor Sarah will get a scar out of this encounter. Let's we'll see. Oops. So we've grabbed the by the first toe left foot so we didn't interrupt the attack so what I'm going to do though is I think that was with yeah that was with our right hand so here I still can't throw it which is very frustrating let's just see what a strike will give us again ah we have a we have an excellent again this blue exclamation mark strike to the head which is with a kick as well well the Kia will get a attack in, but if we make it quick, we've got a direct hit to the head with our kick. So I think we're going to do that. That will kill the Kia for sure, but it might get its attack in before we finish. We'll just see what happens. Ah, it missed us anyway. And we kick the Kia in the head with our left foot, and the injured part collapses into a lump of gore. An artery has been opened by the attack, but doesn't really matter that the artery was open because the head is a lump of gore, um, but we have survived that attack. And then you, you can see how 
wrestling is a very tactical game and you have to be really careful about what things you choose but you can actually go completely unarmed and be quite powerful actually as a adventurer I may just leave um, let's just have a look at uh, how we're doing with our wrestling we got a little bit more <laughs> so I may leave this for Balmeric and Tess to clean up we'll see the blue one, the blue flashing guy there, will be easy to kill because um, it's frightened. When they're frightened, they're not very good at fighting. So let's do... Oops. Bomber grabs the Kia by the right wing from behind with his right lower arm, which is not a good move, actually, because in this particular case, he would have done better to punch it. And then immediately he released the grip. He wants to have revenge on these Kias. I don't know why. I think dwarves in particular are pre-programmed to hate Kias and so he grabs the Kia again but he gets snatched at and he gets hit in the left lower arm with the first toe so it only bruised him so he's not doing too badly but I'm thinking maybe I may take this opportunity we're going to move in and maybe give him a hand because I'm just worried that he's going to get injured Balmerick bends the Kia's left upper leg with his left hand and the left hip collapses. So the Kia missed Balmerick and Balmerick's doing some wrestling of his own. He, I guess he saw us wrestling and thought that this was a good idea. It's not a particularly good idea but I see he's attacking the one down here. You can see it's flashing and so I thought he was attacking the other one so now I'll have to just move down to get that. Ah, The Kia misses Balmerick again. He grabs the Kia by the third toe then he punches the Kia in the left lower leg. He releases the grip and a flying copper bolt strikes the Kia in the lower body, tearing the muscle and spilling uh, her guts. And the Kia is propelled away by the force of the blow. So we can't attack it until the Kia comes to rest. So what I'm going to do, given that Tess is here and she's shot in this direction, that means the Kia is going to continue on in this direction. So if I go down, so, and now, Balmerick is trying to attack the other Kia, so I'm a little bit worried about this. We don't want to get too many adversaries, but I'm just going to go southeast. Oops, I've gone too far. I'm not sure what happened actually, because I think I may have taken one extra step by accident. The muscular Kia snatches at Balmerick in the upper body with his first toe, bruising the muscle and bruising the left lung through the pigtail cloak. Okay, now that is a little bit dangerous. If you bruise the lung, then often you have difficulty breathing and if you have difficulty breathing then you can die so we need to be a bit careful about Balmerick here one of the Kias has bled to death Balmerick charges the muscular Kia and the muscular Kia is knocked over and tumbles backward which is useful and unfortunately Balmerick is just wrestling over and over again at least he punched in the end punches the muscular Kia in the lower leg so let's try and give him a hand. He may finish up before we get there. And he charged him again. So the muscular Kia looks surprised by the ferocity of Balmerick's onslaught. And then Balmerick punches him in the upper body with his left hand. And you can see here he has jammed the left false ribs through the left lung and it tears apart the left lung. So now the muscular Kia is having trouble breathing, which means He's not long for this world, actually. Balmerick kicks the muscular Kia in the right foot with his left foot. So the force twists the right ankle and the part splits in gore. And the muscular Kia falls over. So Balmerick has won this fight, generally speaking. So I don't think we have to worry. I'm just going to look at this one. Is this... That's a Kia corpse. It's really hard to tell because I've got the cones on, so... But I think we've actually killed all of the Kias except for this one. And I think Balmerick has that under control. Balmerick grabs the muscular Kia by the third toe for no good reason and then releases it right away. The muscular Kia misses Balmerick and then he grabs it again with his right hand and then releases it right away. And then luckily Tess <laughs> says, none of this fooling around. She'll just uh, hit it with a, another bolt. Now Balmerick grabs the muscular Kia by the neck. I might just get in on this. So I, I won't attack Balmerick, I will attack the Kia. The Kia is attacking Balmerick. We're not quite sure how he's attacking. So we could potentially try to intercept that attack. 
but we're not quite sure what it is that they're attacking with. I may do it anyway. We'll just try because it would be quite cool if we'd managed it. So we just look at the Kia. So muscular Kia is B. Uh, his head is okay. The right ankle is kind of messed up. So I'm going to guess that attack is actually going to be on the beak. So I'm actually going to wrestle the beak and see what happens. So B. I'm going to grab with her left hand. I, I don't know why I always grab with my left hand for some reason. And I'm going to grab the beak. You can grab the tongue as well and rip it out if you want. Um, it's not very useful. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that you'll notice, uh, this seems kind of crazy with all these toes and fingers and everything that you can grab. But the interesting thing about it is that these things that you can grab actually have some value with certain foes. With other foes, it doesn't make any, doesn't have any value at all. Um, and so, for instance, like if you're wrestling a snake, it's actually quite useful to grab the teeth, and then you can pinch them out. Um, so you can pinch out all the fangs, and then the snake then can't attack at all because it can only attack with a bite. That's why it has all these body parts. You can go for them if you want. They're not that interesting, and they don't really have much effect. So. You have to be careful about what you choose. So we're going to grab the beak. And unfortunately, we did not guess correctly what attack it was. What we could do again is potentially, because he's still attacking Bomrick. So let's see if we can guess. I'm going to guess then it's the left leg. Because he can only attack with three things. He can attack with the beak. He can attack with the left leg. Or he can attack with the right leg. So if we can wrestle the right hand. And let's take... I'm going to think it's a left leg, because the right leg is kind of messed up in the moment. So, unfortunately, we've got all these toes that we have to deal with. So, I'm just going to grab the third toe. It's kind of a gamble. So, the muscular kia is unable to break the grip of your left hand. The muscular kia is unable to break the grip of Balmerick's left hand on its neck. Um, we grabbed it by the third toe, but unfortunately, the muscular kia was not using that to attack. And it missed Balmerick, which is good. Now, Bomrick punches the muscular kia in the upper body with the left hand, bruising the muscle and shattering the true ribs. So that's good. So I think this, this kia is just about done for. So again, we're going to... Because it's recovering from attacking, so we can actually strike while we're wrestling it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack its lower right foot. The other thing we could do is we could pinch its beak, which gets rid of one of its attacks. That might be a better idea. So let's go B, wrestle. We're gonna wrestle with the left hand, which was the beak. We're gonna pinch the beak. And you can see we pinch the muscular Kia's beak with our left hand and the severed part sails off in an arc. So there's the beak gone. So now, now the Kia can't attack with the beak. And we're just gonna wait with the comma again. Now we can attack again. And apparently Balmark is talking to someone. I'm not sure what he's saying. I might actually do the same thing with the right hand. We'll just pinch the third toe off. And there we go. And the muscular kia has bled to death. So that's one of the things. If you pinch off these body parts, they'll, they'll bleed to death pretty quickly. Now, one of the things that's very important is that Balmerick has taken some damage. Let's have a look at it. His left lung is bruised. His left lower arm looks to be bruised. And his upper body looks to be bruised. So I'm just going to quickly look at his description and make sure... So his left lung is bruised, his upper body is bruised, his left lower arm is bruised. This is a bit unfortunate because what we really need to do is we need to get Balmerick to a place where we can fast travel. Once we can fast travel, Balmerick will heal right away and he'll be good as new because he's just bruised. But before we can get into fast travel mode, he's going to be injured. This is something we have to be a bit careful with. If I go to fast travel mode, right now we have to come down from the mountains before we can fast travel. Now, we're almost there. So if we just follow this road, we should get there fairly quickly. As long as we don't run into more Kias, I think we'll be completely fine. So let's uh, follow this road again. And the, I see that there's probably another Kia below us. I'm hoping that these guys... Yeah, I'm hoping that these guys... Don't go after the Kia, but unfortunately Bomrick is thinking that he needs to get his revenge for all of his bruises that he really brought upon himself. I have to say, you know, going crazy into the battle like that. If we talk to Bomrick, we can ask him to cease hostilities. I really don't know what this does. I'm hoping he will say, okay, and we can just continue traveling. Ah, good. I will fight no more. Oh, that's excellent. 
And as much as I said that I was going to have a short episode today, it seems that this will not come to pass. Uh, again, looking like we have some more birds, uh, more Kias. Uh, this is very frustrating. I don't really want to get off the road, to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of them too. They are flying though, so hopefully these guys will ignore them. If we're lucky. No. Tess will have nothing to do with leaving these Kias alive. And if, again, if you ever play in Fortress mode and you have Kias, you completely understand her feeling. <laughs> but, yeah, this is not the time and place, Tess. We really need to get Bomrick someplace where he can heal. But I guess we are stuck with this. So, how high up is this Kia? It's about it's three levels above. You can see this is where I am here. We're three levels down, and this is the Kia here. So, um, hopefully Tess can just take it down with her crossbow. That's looking not too bad, actually. Except Tess is not coming with us. Ah, oh, here, here she comes. Ah, there we go. And the, you can see the corpse of the Kia fell to the ground there. And probably we could get another crossbow bolt back by going there, but I'm not going to bother because I'm just a bit afraid that there'll be more Kias that we have to deal with. And I don't really want to do that right now. Ah, we have more yaks. I don't think the yaks are going to give us any problems. I really hope not, because I don't think we can really deal with them. Ah, there's something below us. Let's just have a look to see what that is. Ah, it's another wolverine. Yeah, so we have to be a little bit careful, but I don't think, as long as we stay away from it, I think we'll be fine. I'm a bit worried about Bomrick, but I think we'll be fine. We seem to have run out of road, which is interesting. But we've got out of the mountains now. So now, if we just fast travel, and if I stop now, we can look at Bomrick. You'll see now that Bomrick is completely healed. Uh, because they were only bruises, so it's it's fine. And in fact, actually his clothes aren't even messed up, which is very good, because otherwise we'll have, to, we'll have to buy him new clothes. And he has no scars or anything like that. He's doing pretty well. Let's just finish up. I want to just talk with our companions. Ah, so Eric would like to make some music, which maybe we'll do next episode. And yeah, Tess is annoyed by the rain, but I think we've gotten out of the rain now. It seems that it's not raining anymore which is nice. If I just go capital W, yeah, you can see that now the sky is clear and we have a cool breeze blowing from the east, which is very nice. Let's talk with Bomrick, who I was a bit worried about getting injured, but, uh, oh, he's still upset. That's it. Let's ask to him to, no, he's, he's, he is upset still. <laughs> poor, poor old son. He really did not enjoy that fight with the Kias. He's still fuming about it. Well, I guess that's all that you can say about that. So, until next time, this has been Uru Uru Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton. I'll see you next time.